just so you know, we are recording. Okay. Um, well, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. And I'm always happy to show up, even if there's just one of you. So, uh, so far, I don't think we've ever had a meeting with nobody. But that's a good, <laughs> good thing. So this is kind of what we're going to go over uh, and skim through today as a recap from our last meeting. I, again, as I had said before, I will post the last meeting and you can go watch it at your leisure and fast forward and skip around to what's important to you. Um, so we're going to dive right into this stuff so we can get you out of here in a timely fashion. So, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Stephen. I'm the president of the Master Boosters uh, for at least the next year and a half or so. Um, we are looking for new people to come on side us and start training, co-training with us, because we do have quite a few people that have been with us that are going to be leaving. Um, so we are looking for a new president. We're looking for a CFO, um, you know, so a, a, a treasurer, but somebody really that can uh, has a little bit of accounting background to it. Um, We've got uh, uh, need a VP of fundraising. Margo's going to be leaving at some point, so we need to kind of get somebody trained up on rally up and how to manage all that. Uh, we're looking for a VP of communication to help really communicating out to all of our people as well as social media and interacting with the school and all of the, the things that we don't really do very well because I don't have somebody to do it. Um, and then the VP of technology, uh, Amanda Allen and uh, Margo right now are the ones setting up all of the registrations and managing our sports engine website. So we need somebody to do that uh, and a secretary. So if anybody here is interested, please let me know. We'd love to talk more about it and get you involved um, cross training and working with us on on what that means for the next couple of years. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. So you have two positions then, right? You're the president of the whole thing and then the co-president of track and field, or is that right. is that okay? So yeah. there's there's like a yeah, you're not in sport too. Yeah, so so the booster is, you know, overall there's one organization, right? There's one corporate entity that we have, right? And that's that's our uh, Granite Bay High Boosters Association. Underneath that every club operates kind of like they are their own company if you will right they have a president and a treasurer and maybe some of these other positions okay. but they're they're in name only right they don't actually have they can't go into a contract or anything like that only us at the master level can do that um, but we give everybody autonomy they all have their own accounting records everybody kind of manages themselves and then we oversee it at the top Um, and, a and a club, yeah, for sure. And some people do multiple clubs. We have, uh, you know, uh, Susan Graham, you know, she does quite a few treasures for a few different clubs. So, I mean, you can do lots. It just depends on how much time you have. <laughs> Master Boosters does tend to be a little more involved than, um, you know, a normal club because you're doing it year round versus just for, you know, a few months of the, the year. Um, so one of the things that we did skip, and I'll just briefly mention it. Um, so when clubs have new presidents and treasurers, you know, we have to update that in our check request system and it's all manual right now. We have implemented a new system for doing that digitally yourself. It's not 100% live. We're hoping the next week or so, but we did talk about it in the last meeting so that you guys can maintain that information as you know, new presidents and treasurers come in. You don't have to notify us anymore. You just go in, make the changes, uh, and it'll go through. So then that leads into this, um, you know, we do need to, if you haven't already, and you're coming into your season, we need to get everything updated, make sure if there's been any changes to your treasurer or president that we get those registered as quickly as we can, and all of your coaches and volunteers that they get registered into uh, Grizzly Pride. Um, so even with media, if you have other people that are helping you and doing different stuff, they need to go to this grizzlypiratecom slash volunteers and register so that they'll get emails from us and we know how to associate them to 
the media. Um, so Grizzly Pride is our uh, main website for everybody. Um, and just to clarify for the recording purposes, teams don't have their own websites anymore. Um, so it is something that everybody uses this as their main web platform. Um, and nobody has their own like, oh, I've got a website here, I've got a website there, and everybody's kind of got a different stuff. Um, there's very few exceptions to that. Uh, more so on the school clubs, we've still allowed like choir and drama still have uh, kind of their own, mainly because they've had that legacy and they do stuff that we can't easily as do as well with the sports engine. Um, but, you know, we really want everybody to be in one site. And that helps all the clubs to have better recognition and people who are browsing maybe for one sport will get to go see other clubs, see what they're doing. Uh, give us better integration for calendars and social media integration and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you haven't done so already, it's time to onboard for the next season. We, I think, got most of uh, winter done and we're already starting on spring. So if you haven't done it yet, then you need to uh, get going on that. Um, and then once we get spring going, we'll be getting football going again and the, and the, uh, uh, fall sports for the next yeah, season. Uh, Margo and Amanda, yeah. So they're the ones they they'll be emailing out to everybody. So oh, if okay. you haven't gotten an email yet, you should have. I think there are a couple that they hadn't heard from yet. So if you're one of them, then reach out to Margo. Spring. So. Yeah. Spring's so spring there. spring's coming. Okay. Yeah, we're we're trying to get it done early because uh, even with track. Uh, we're, we've already started building ours, um, you know, just so that we have it done really early. It makes it much easier to get to, out to the parents um, and get those registrations done. And that way you're not waiting until February or March to be like, ah, I need to get it done. My parent meeting's in two weeks. So. Huh? The booster website. So if you haven't been there, you should go there. Um, we do add stuff regularly to this. All of the calendar for this next year, all the way through summer, is already live on here for our boosters meetings. Um, you know, you can, if, if somebody needs our W9 or they need our tax ID or any of these things that regularly come up that you may be like, oh, I need that for, you know, this donation. It's all on this site. Um, the stipend calculators there. That's where you submit forms for deposits or check requests. Um, do your club info updates um, and more. Okay. So stipend updates, they are slightly different. They changed them at the end of last year. Um, they tried to make it very difficult for us. Um, and we kind of simplified it with them. We kind of pushed back a little bit and said, this doesn't quite work the way you're trying to do it. Um, what happened was the district has like three or four tax brackets now instead of the two we were used to using. And most schools and booster clubs were not properly managing it. So we were, we had our calculator and you pick classified or teacher and it, Told exactly what that needed to be. Um, other schools couldn't figure that out. So the checks were always wrong. They were always coming back saying, oh, this and that, I need you to fix it. Um, so the district said, we're not doing that anymore. We're not going to tell you what the tax rates are. Um, just give us a check and they get paid what they get paid. Okay. Um, we kind of pushed that back a little bit and said, well, that sucks. <laughs> you know, how are we supposed to know? What they're going to get paid so the compromise we did is some people are going to get overpaid and some people are probably going to get a little underpaid depending on what they do because the calculator just uses one a tax right now so it's 10 and something percent based off of one of their previous tax rates um so if they weren't a teacher then likely they're going to get a little more than they might have in the past you know uh, instead of that thousand dollars you're going to get thousand fifty right um and then if they're a teacher and or a, uh, a teacher 
and they might be in the third bracket or other brackets and maybe instead of the thousand that you want them to have they're going to get nine so if your coaches have questions send them to ten <laughs> not us yeah and, and just know that it's just going to be what it is so go use the calculator if you're trying to pay them 1500 bucks and put in 1500 bucks and then use whatever it calculates and it's going to get it as close as we can um laura returned mine last year right at the end which is fine i can resubmit it um is if i get the request for signed by tim then do I do a paper check form again? Yeah. I can do it online and I can just upload yes. the So we, we use the check request process and all you do is attach the um, the statement. As the receipt. Okay. Yeah, that's the um, and that's what we're gonna do for the time being. Eventually I'd like to have that a little more automated even for the statement of purpose and the school can just e-sign and have mm -hmm. it automate all of that. Um, and I, I do intend to have that done before I leave. Yeah, I mean, modernize <laughs> so. Yeah, um, and I think they're ready for it, you know, um, I think they're ready for it, but uh, I know the district's not, so it added a little more, like I still have to then print a PDF and I have to generate a PDF off of the digital stuff I make. It has to be the same format, so it was just a little more work than we were had time for. And do you know if they receive a W-2 or a 1099? I had a coach ask me. All of the uh, coaches are W-2. That's okay. why they have to go through this is because okay. they're on payroll. Okay. Yeah, now, we pay 1099s for people outside of that, you know, uh, okay. media, choir, you know, right? They hire uh, companies and things like that, and they get paid well more than the $600, so those people will get a 1099. Is there not? Employees of the district. Any other questions on the stipends? Okay. Uh, tickets. So this was an exciting thing we talked about. So one of the biggest hurdles we've had over the last um, year, especially with COVID, was keeping track of all of your guys' requests to us through the club request email. Uh, we weren't getting back to people on time or dropping the ball and forgetting to respond or not everybody was in the right loop so we're moving away from that into a ticket system and so every request kind of like the check request every request will have an id it will automate you know, it'll escalate automatically it'll let us track who who has opened requests so that will make sure that no balls are dropped and get it to the right team Right. We'll get it to finance if it's finance related. We'll get it to fundraising if it's fundraising related. Um, I was hoping to have that live by tonight, but it, it's going to take it a lot more work. So we'll have it up before the next meeting. Uh, we'll do training next month, um, if not a little sooner on that. Um, oh, and that, this is a whole different electronic tickets, but um, so that's in here somewhere. But we do sell tickets through hometown ticketing. So all the sports are doing that. Um, um, Jason Sidra manages that, thank goodness, this year. So he's the one in charge of making sure all of your um, events that are managed here are in there and parents can buy the tickets online. Okay. Um, so we're, we're trying to avoid taking cash in person at the gate. Yeah, tickets are still... Playoff, unfortunately, <laughs> because we don't control those. Uh, those are done through GoFan, and we have no control over that. So, yeah, we're we're seeing that a lot because most of the other schools in the district use GoFan. We tried it out; we hate it. Hometown ticketing is a significantly easier platform to use; has a lot more features for the parents. You can print a ticket. Can't do that with GoFan. <laughs> so, if you don't use their mobile app, you don't get in. So. Um, yeah, well, you get an email yeah. notification. You get an email, you know, receipt. Go fan, right? yeah. Yeah, so go fan. Yeah. yeah, I use it. I think it's pretty convenient. Yeah, well, well if you like GoFan, you'll like ours better. So ours is significantly <laughs> better than GoFan. So yeah, we we aren't we don't use the GoFan. Um, for anything in the stadium or in the theater, which not everybody here really does. Uh, we can even do reserved seating and everything. 
Um, so we're doing that now in the stadium for football. We did the whole middle section was all reserved seating um, and you could buy VIP tickets and things like that um, so that you could have a numbered seat to go sit in. Um, choir and drama are still hybrid. They're still using a platform they implemented last year called Ludus. We're working on moving them over to this um, platform as well. Uh, but it really, really helps us to, you know, give each of you guys as clubs the ability to generate more revenue. So uh, I'll do kind of go over the refreshers since we have a couple of new people here and just to kind of reiterate from the last meeting. Um, on check requests, um, we use electronic checks. Um, there's a lot of confusion on what that means. Um, so I like to go over it, make sure everybody understands, but, um, you know, the checks can either be printed when the person gets it, right? Just like a normal check. So if anybody ever tells you, I need a, a printed check, you just say, no problem. You can print the check when it comes, or it will do an ACH deposit directly into whatever account they want. Okay. Uh, so there tends to be with newer vendors, a little confusion on that. Most don't have a problem. Uh, the few people we've had to work with that said, oh, we can't do that, ultimately could do it just fine. They just didn't understand. Um, so we like to talk about that. Um, so all payments and reimbursements need to be through that system. So if you spend any money, if you have an invoice or somebody pays for something needs to get reimbursed, they need to use the check request system to get paid out of that. Um, anyone can fill it out. So this is one that I like to kind of harp on because, um, you know, we've kind of uh, used to be in the mode that coaches or parents would just save them all up and then give a whole bunch of receipts to a treasurer and be like, hey, handle these. So what we really encourage, especially on parent nights and stuff, tell everybody about our system so that if they pay something for you, they can go right away and fill this out on their own. Okay. So I would encourage to add it to your parent night as part of a, let me tell you, hey, if you guys help us out or you pay for something for the team, you can get reimbursed. Here's how you do it. Do it as quickly as you can once you get it done and that way it flows through properly. Um, one transaction per request. This one is super important. I just had to decline one where somebody put $25,000 worth of reimbursements from 15 different uh, companies. Okay. We just can't do it. That's, there's no way that, you know, typically the math ends up being wrong. Some of the invoices don't have the right stuff. So instead of, you know, when you glum it all together, you know, then you're declining or approving it as a whole. I don't have a way to pick out and go, well, no, these four invoices were wrong. Go fix those. So. We can if you do it individually. And then the other big thing um, is receipts must show that it was paid by the person asking to get the money. So that's something that we see uh, in the recent check request I had to decline. There are quite a few invoices in there that were just invoices or sales quotes that they didn't show that they were properly paid, didn't show it was paid on a credit card, and didn't show who paid it. So somebody needs to get an invoice from them. Um, or if it is an invoice, then either it needs to be the person, the company needs to be the one we're paying, or that invoice needs to say paid and, you know, have a zero dollar balance on. Um, if you are newer to the clubs, we do have a whole system of reports and stuff that come out on the 10th. That's all automated now. It used to be something we'd have to update and um, kind of manage. And then treasurers and presidents will get a daily digest if there's stuff waiting for you to approve. Uh, deposit refresher. Uh, so again, this is more related for treasurers, but we do have uh, our bank is Tri-County's Bank. Everybody, all of our treasurers can make deposits there. Every club has a stamp a check stamp to endorse the, the, the checks. Um, and then once you do a deposit, you do the form online. And we do need that form to have each individual check in the deposit or cash. Um, it needs to list who it's from, what it was for, the dollar amount of that check for every line item. Because we, we have the obligation to track 
if Susie gave you a check for $100 this year and then later gives you another and those are all donations, we have to be able to know that. Otherwise, if you just say donations, $5,000 and include a whole bunch of people, we'd have no idea who to, you know, give the IRS a letter saying, yes, they spent that money with us. Uh, fundraising platforms are we're still using the same fundraising platform rally up. Um, uh, Margo's in charge of all of that for at least the next year or so. Um, everybody should be using this for all kinds of stuff, right? Um, as you kind of mentioned, Kim, you can use it for general donations from corporate sponsors. It could be, um, you know, a lot of people are using it. Um, Kind of what they used to use raise up for, where each kid is trying to raise a hundred dollars and it tracks their little goal of, you know, how far is Susie making it on their progress to to raise a hundred dollars, and then as a team, at that twenty thousand dollar mark, you should be everybody should be doing that every year, even if you don't need the money because you get enough from your you know club donations. Why not? Right? If Susie's grandparents wants to chip in some money, take that extra money and use it for equipment and saving up for years yet uh, we need the only other thing is uh no raffles so i don't think anybody in here does them um if you do then we have other ways of doing a raffle uh, i'm going to kind of uh, peruse through this so we can make a generic donation page as we already kind of talked about and every team really should have one and then this will be in both this video as well as last video. These are a bunch of different sample sites you can go see. Like if you're like, well, I don't know. What does that look like? What does the sweepstake look like? You can go uh, kind of get that info in there. If you were thinking about doing an auction, you can see what an auction would look like. Um, scoreboards. We are replacing all of them across campus, including softball. So, because we certainly would not exclude our lovely ladies when we're going to do the, the baseball field. So, um, in a couple days here, we will be meeting to get updated quotes for the entire campus from our sign provider and our construction team. Um, and then we will all begin fundraising for it. Um, you know, we expect obviously football, track, some of the bigger sports would probably take a heftier load of that, mainly because we already have some big sponsors in the works for it. Um, but we do intend to probably fundraise campus wide. Um, it's something that we'll try to push out through, you know, home campus to all the parents and just be like, hey, if every parent donated, you know, 40 bucks, we'd probably hit our goal, right? Um, so every team will be involved in some fashion to it um you know the the more we raise the faster we can probably get it done uh, we'd like to have all of this in place by next school year um it's lofty i don't know if we'll get it done mainly because i don't know that the district i'm not worried about the fundraising i think that'll be easy i the district's construction team is is uh hard to work with so we have a lot of uh hurdles to get over Keep the puns coming. Uh, any questions on the scoreboards? These are some samples of what they're going to look like, but they'll all be video scoreboards everywhere. They're, they're not just new scoreboards from NEPCO or anything. It will all be video scoreboards. How many do we need? Uh, so there's two in the gym, uh, one in the football, one at baseball, one at softball. Uh, so five, I think. Oh, plus we're going to do the marquee out front because that thing's awful. So we'd like to have a nice new one out front. So that's six. Going to cost half many. Yeah, roughly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is different from uh, just the TV, right? Like, because right now, if you check on the uh, Costco, it's a big TV, 60, 70 inch, just a 2,000 box. Yeah, no, def definitely different. different. <laughs> These aren't even the same things. I and mean, we're talking hundreds of inches. 
Yeah, they don't even make TVs that big. But yeah, these have to be outdoor rated. They have to be, you know, these are all LED panels. So if you have you been to the aquatic center? So if you drove in, you saw the big bright sign when you drove in the parking lot. Yeah, it's like a TV. It, it, it'll be like that. Yeah. Side of a building TV. And yeah. and that one alone was seventy thousand dollars for that one. Uh, any questions? Good. Um, as a reminder, we have signup.com. We pay for it. Don't use Signup Genius. Use this. Yeah, don't use Google Forms. Use this. We pay for it. It's super easy to use. If Margo was here, she would tell you all about it because we made her convert from Sign Up Genius to Sign Up for um, Silver Grad Night. And that's like 200 plus volunteers that she had to do. And she absolutely loved it. So uh, make sure that you get this going for you guys. If you are using a different platform before, just move over. It's super simple to use. Um, it gives you a bunch of extra features you can't get with sign up without paying for, um, like volunteer check in and things like that, automated SMS messages to remind them that they've signed up for stuff, you know, things that, um, you know, that we've paid for so that you guys can use it in school, That's including media. So all the teachers can have this. If you have any volunteers uh, type stuff, make sure that we pass it around. Yeah people were having to yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, like, mm. <laughs> that's not appropriate. <laughs> uh, just a reminder, we have insurance. You don't ever need to get your own. We had a club last year or this year um, in the fall pay for some insurance and they spent a hundred and something dollars that was wasted. So there's no reason you would ever need your own we can cover clinics, we can cover, you know, we cover everything that we do as a boosters, um, including alcohol, if you have a fundraising event or things like that. So um, don't get any, um, you know, we've got great limits. We cover, you know, a bunch of different stuff in there, um, you know, including things that we hope we'd never have to use. A new, new add-on was for, um, um, you know, if there's any kind of misconduct kind of stuff from a volunteer or a coach or something. So, you know, hopefully we'll never have to use this. We haven't yet, thank goodness. We have had some deaths, but it's not worth really using this for the minor stuff. New concession stands doesn't really affect anybody in here, I don't think. So I won't spend a lot of time on it, but we the whole ticket booth and snack bar are being redone. If you haven't been out by the football field, it's demolished. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're super excited about it. Uh, the, use those areas, um, you know, and even for maybe, you know, softball and baseball, I know they have kind of your own shack stuff that you're using, but this might be centrally located enough. It may make sense to try to use, uh, but it will be a full on concession stand. We'll have point of sale systems in it like we do now, but lots of them will have a home side, a mobile order side. We'll have, you know, um, we're hoping soda fountain and built in grills and all that kind of stuff for it. So we're, we're super excited. We hoped it was going to be up by track, but they seem to be behind schedule. So I don't expect it will be, uh, which will make for a very interesting track season and, and, uh, Spring sports season for everybody. I have a quick question. Yes. Crystal Thorns from Lacrosse and Football. How are you? Great. Great to Good. have you. <laughs> so, quick question about um, for football when they tore down the existing snack bar and buildings, that was kind of our storage. So, we no longer have storage. So, you know, Lacrosse has been generous to let us store some of the stuff in there. Do you know when the new building's up, is there going to be storage again for the football or does anybody know anything about that? The snack bar is still up and running now. So if you're talking about any of the snack mm -hmm. bar storage we're using, then that's still there today. If you're talking about just some of the generic stuff, um, you know, banners and things like that, um, that won't be. Um, there won't be a lot of that in the new building. There'll be some. Okay, because I know what's when we are using. 
Well, so I'm not extremely familiar with a lot of it, but I know that like we got an email basically that, um, you know, lacrosse has been generous to, to store our items. I think it might've been part of the bathroom building. Was there like a, a room or anything attached to that, that we used to store some stuff in? It was the ticket booth and there wasn't a whole lot stored in there. We had some, again, some banners. I think uh, all of our coolers, like all of our coolers and um, the, the stuff that the moms would make for meals, all of that stuff was stored in there. So I offered to store the ice chest at my home um, temporarily, but um, I don't think that's like a long-term fix. So I didn't know who we were supposed to talk to to figure out if there's going to be some type of shed or anything that's going to be available for the football to go back to be putting their stuff in there. Well, football has their own. So football does have their own storage. In fact, they, they get the whole underneath storage of the uh, stands. So that's all dedicated to football. Exactly. Um, and then most, most of the um, coolers that they had were stored in the snack bar, um, at least for the season. Now, once the season's done, they need to move somewhere else, like underneath the, uh, the stands. Um, there aren't any new storage facilities being built. No. Okay. Okay, then I will go back to figure out where they used to store this stuff. Um, Cause it sounds like to me, it used to be just in the bathroom building, like the ticket booth building. Like you said that they used to store yeah, things in there. So stuff in there, and maybe there was a cooler to every once in a while, but it, again, there wasn't a whole lot stored in that ticket booth. Okay. All right. I'll go back to the drawing board. Yeah, the secondary you know, question. Most of the coolers were again stored in the snack bar, which is still around. That that, that won't go away until the other one's built. Okay. The secondary question. Sorry, I put in the chat um, a while back. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah. Sorry, I'm not monitoring that. So. No, you're okay. Um, who is the contact that you guys are reaching out to? Because you mentioned earlier about spring sports, making sure everybody is registered, and then you most of the contacts have been reached out to. Who is your contact for the boys lacrosse? Do you know. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, so I have to get with Margo, and she'll she'll be back later, perhaps before uh, we're done. Um, okay. But I don't know offhand. Okay, just because Lisa. I know some of them changed for the girls lacrosse, or we just updated some new. They just gave us a couple of days ago their new people, so it, it could be that we don't have new people for boys no, yet. No, we just had our booster our arm meeting last night. And I just want to make sure you guys knew that Lisa Stabbert's no longer the lead. So Tracy was going yeah. to be reaching out. So uh, Yeah, so we got a new list uh, 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 last night of those people. Perfect. So yeah, that, okay. that's being updated. Okay, perfect. That's it. No more questions. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, electronic payments, credit cards. This is just a reminder. You know, we have all this stuff. Uh, don't use your own for one. Don't use a Venmo. Don't use a PayPal. Like if it's not a booster given account, don't use it. Um, and then we've set up um, most of our stuff through uh, Square. So most teams at this point have bought one of these little Square readers in the top right corner there. They're roughly $45 now, I think. They went up uh, $10. Um, <laughs> But they do Apple Pay and the chip cards and all that stuff right in it, and it's easy to use. So every club should have one. If you don't yet, put it on your budget to get one for the year, because then you can use it in person when you want to sell a shirt or if somebody wants to donate right then and there and you happen to have the card reader, take the money. Uh, we have really good rates with Square, um, so you might as well take advantage of that. Um, we do have a couple of these terminals that can be checked out and used. They are stored currently in our uh, snack bar. Um, so if you do need them, when we have our new help desk system, one of the things will be, I need to check out some equipment and then you'll be able to pick what you need um, and request that and we'll check to see if it's already being used for those dates. And if not, we'll arrange for you to get it. Um, I definitely do not recommend buying those terminals yourself. Just keep the card readers. Because uh, Wi-Fi around campus is not very great. Uh, any questions on the credit card stuff? Great. Um, donations versus fees. So we're kind of at the end. This is something if you've ever been to one of my booster meetings in the last year and a half, you've seen this and I will keep repeating at every meeting. Um, donations versus fees. What you need to know, schools 
uh, you know, and us as boosters and not charge fees for sports or clubs. Okay. Um, so we can't charge for uniforms. We can't, you know, say, oh, if you want to play, you got to give us 250 bucks. Um, we can ask for voluntary uh, contributions, right? Donations. Um, so part of the reason that we went to the Grizzly Pride and Sports Engine is so that we can centralize our registration process and we can help you guys making sure we use all the right language and encouragement for those donations, okay? You will have people who won't pay. They will not donate. I'm not gonna give you anything and we can't tell them, sorry, you don't get to participate, okay? Um, and if there's a piece of uniform that you guys determine, cheer team, they want to have everybody have little ears or something, they get them. You can't be like, oh, well, you don't get to participate in that part of the team. Now, there are optional things like track has track bag and warm ups and stuff that aren't required. You don't need to have them. Then you can say, hey, if you don't pay, you're not getting one of those. But you certainly can't prevent them from participating in the sport. Um, we cannot have donations used for a particular student. That one's kind of obvious, but you know, it does come up from time to time. Uh, we cannot force purchases of equipment or spirit packs. That comes up regularly where you know clubs need reminding that you can't you can't be like, hey, I'm gonna you know force this thing. I want them to do that. Um, and we can't force fees with a waiver. So that's another misconception. Oh, well, we're gonna put it in there and we'll have a button that says ask us if you need help paying for this or something. We, we can't do that, right? Beyond embarrassing for one to have to or somebody to have that conversation with you. But, you know, typically the people that want that, they'll come to you, right? They'll come to you and say, hey, you know, I know it's $400, you know, I can only pay half of that, you know, can you help me out? And of course, you know, as a club, we can all do that. Um, and if you didn't know already, we already give them payment plans as an option. Being painful or pay over, three, four months. And we set that up for every transaction. Uh, we can require the students to fundraise as long as it's a team or club effort. You can't say, oh, Susie, you didn't donate, so you need to go raise $200, you know, on Rally Up. Okay? But we can force them to do it um, as part of a team effort. Um, any questions on the donations versus fees? Hopefully at this point I've beaten, beaten it to death enough so people kind of get it. Um, monthly one-on-ones, we're happy to meet with you guys. We want to participate in your clubs too. Invite us to come participate in a board meeting that you have. We'd love to see how you guys do it, answer questions that maybe the rest of your volunteers have when they don't come here. And I encourage all of you to have all your people come. Teachers should come, other parent volunteers should come to this. They, they'll learn a lot. Most people leave going, wow, I didn't realize we could do all that stuff. So now it's just open Q&A. So if you don't have any questions or anything else to talk about, you're more than welcome to head on out or drop off online. Otherwise, what do you guys got? What questions do you guys have? Or what things are you excited about for your new season? I don't want to be the only one. But you guys have I'll questions. Ask a question. Oh, you go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned in the beginning some of the positions that were open for next year and stuff. Um, is there some place to kind of see what those? I mean, some of them make sense, obviously, secretary and stuff like that. Yeah. But is there some place to kind of see what those yeah. entail, what they do? So we have descriptions on our website okay. uh, under. There's a board nomination form, and when you click on that form in the e form section, it will then list all of the positions time estimates, what those things do. Okay. We're going to be updating all that and putting even a section um, with the new ticket system. We're building a knowledge base so that all of these questions we ask all the time and pe new people are like, well, what about this? Or what does this person do? Or I'm a treasurer of a club. What does that mean for me? We'll have a place you can go and just dive through questions and videos and we'll walk you through all of that. So, um, but, you know, it's also just as easy just to sit with us and say, hey, 
tell me a little bit more about these ones. Those sounded maybe like they're in my wheelhouse, and then we can kind of talk about what they involve. Okay. So um, reaching out to you directly to say, hey, that yeah. one sounds interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if there was something you were interested in, then, you know, once we get everybody out of here, maybe tell me, you know, we can talk about it and just tell you what things are easier or what things you might be interested in. What else? I have some questions on sports engine. Still right. having trouble with it. Okay. <laughs> so last year, I, and I think it was just because Margo and Amanda, it was their first time, but I got clumped in with like seven clubs. So like my financials never really worked out. I just had to keep track of what I know went through registration and then make sure, because it was like I had me and over grad night and volleyball were all lumped together in our financials. It was a weird, so, but it's supposed to be just one to one, right? Like, it is one to one. Okay. And they've never been glummed. So if you happen to see others, it was more of just a permission and you were seeing other things that you shouldn't have. I would say that if I looked at money collected, it was everybody's money collected. Yeah, depending on what reports you run, it would have been for all of the things that you had all access like to. Yeah. So, okay. um, Permissions is still something they are trying to grasp and understand, but okay. no, it, it, so even for last year, I, I could go run and report report. exactly on what you had okay. and you could go see it. And, and nor, it I used to be only phone call. Yeah. So I never, I didn't know there was like a way to. Yeah. So if you are seeing, anything. like when you log yeah. in now, if you're seeing anything that right now, you probably shouldn't see anything other than last year's softball. So right. if you're seeing, you know, other stuff, then. Let us know. We'll fix okay. it. And, okay. We need to kind of go through and clean some of that up. I just didn't know that. Yeah, that you run reports by category because I only ever had one category. Right. That makes sense. And that's the way it should be in general, right. but some people are involved. We do have treasurers that sure. have multiple, right? So they need access to the registrations for multiple clubs. But then that means when you run reports, you just need to specify which registration you're running it for. And then I have a lot of parents who had a hard time registering, and I don't know if it's their error or what, but um, I started emailing them like the, I don't know if I was messing something up, but like in the roster system, I would put in their email and send them a request and then they would at least be in there and then they were supposed to go in and register. But I All, all wrong. So okay. whatever you were doing, don't do that because the, re the rostering system built into the team management is not something you should use at all. All the rostering should be done on the back end only when they have registered and you literally drag and drop them across. Yeah, you know, you teams can't they get should be them on. to register without sending them the, like, it, the link. So it is it is all about them typically, and they're being recorded. It, mm -hmm. It's more about being lazy and not really wanting to do it. Um, you know, take teams like football, 100% registration. Um, tracks, you know, we had we had quite a few that didn't, but we also didn't make the registration until after our yeah, parent night was even done. We had a pre-registration form. Our parents filled that out. And they came to actually registering. So like, already did. Like, already did. did. And they were like, oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You really, you really need to. And they're like, oh, you did. Another <laughs> reason that we're starting the spring sports now, yeah. so that you will already have it. And on parent night, my recommendation well, would be to have a to QR do. code. To say scan this QR code, we'll make sure your website has a big button right on the home page that says click okay. here to register. And it's that simple. And once they've done it once for any sport, it becomes even simpler because it fills out most of the information moving forward. Right. Okay. So we only see, you know, issues where maybe people are like, I don't understand, you know, if they are freshmen or never played a sport. Because right, we've been using this for three years now. So most people kind of know what they need to be doing. Um, but if we've had issues where maybe we only made the registration a week before you're supposed to have your parent night, which was the norm last year, then you know, then it becomes kind of weird. Like, did you send them to the right place? How are you doing it? Um, so what I would do once we get your registration up in the next couple of weeks, we'll get it on the website. Make a QR code that goes directly to the right page. Use that on your parent night. And then on parent night, say, all right, here's the slide. You know, we're hoping that most of you by the end of tonight go in and register your athlete. You know, and if you have issues, come up and see us and then you can walk them through and find out what they were doing on their phone. You know, um, and that's what I would do is if they're like, I'm having issues, well, then say, come on <laughs> over. 
come come to the next practice. I'll help you register and you can walk them through what they're doing wrong. Okay. Um, and typically you won't see that. So and Margo can help me create a QR code. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. QR codes are easy to make. Uh, that's easy. Everything down to everybody. You literally go up, just go QR maker and the a website will pop up. And all you do is put in the URL you want and it'll give you a, a QR code to download. Okay. So it's it's super easy. <laughs> uh, what we That's don't true. want is parents doing kind of what you were talking about where they're well here can I just write you a check you know I mean my you know it's my athlete like they need to register right if they don't money. then the coach it's doesn't over. get you know access to send them off it doesn't properly register their athlete so we have had Sports that we're doing it improperly. So then the parent's email is the one that's set up for the athlete's email. And, you know, we've got to use our right forms and get them to do it properly for that. Because then there's typically agreements there, you know, team rules, and right. we're having them sign off on that. The fact that they're going to volunteer and, you know, all of that kind of stuff is, is in there. Is there a way to like send them an invite to go straight to registration or? Again, you can email the link to anybody you want. So if you want to email them, go for it. Yeah. Okay. But, I felt but like what I you want to like, get people used to is to say, go to grizzlypride.com. Well, that's what I did at our parent meeting. Yeah. And then they started doing it on their phones. And they're like, it, was, it doesn't work. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I'm doing a million things. I can't look at it right now. And then I'm like, well, I've never looked at it on the phone. I know how to do it on the laptop. Yeah. So get a QR. So in person, QR code, everybody knows how to do that now. That'll take them right to the registration form or to the web page, right? And then, you know, it's, it's pretty easy it's for me. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? This is Suzanne Schroeder from Boys Volleyball. I'm calling in. Um, for yes. Our, yeah, hi. So for our parent meeting this um, past February, we did exactly that. We had little quarter sheets that had the QR code and the URL and um, gave it to him after the speech about why it's important to donate and that you're, um, you're gonna pick up your uniform package after you get through a line of uh, signing up to volunteer for things and um, you know, a number of the, and registration and then they get their jerseys. Um, one thing that I did though in that, like physically that line, that process is I set up a couple of Chromebooks that I had from my house and mm -hmm. I, Pretty sure we used the school Wi-Fi, but I might have just hotspotted my phone. And a few people utilized that because they didn't like working on their phone. And I just set the home page to our registration uh, link, which is yeah. really, really easy on Sports Center. It's right there on the front, and the folks from the That's master will set it up. And and some people utilized it, which was which is just a nice option to have. We only had thirty families, but. Um, like nobody had a problem. Every single person was able to register before they walked out of the library. Hey, Jason, does the school have some, like if we had, know we're going to have a, a, you know, wrestling sign up in here and we check out three Chromebooks or something? Okay. So we, we have some at the school. So we'll arrange, we'll, we'll come up with some instructions on how to do that moving forward. Because I think that's a great idea to take some of these Chromebooks we have at the school have them put up to the right web page. Um, and then, you know, that way people don't want to, you know, use it on their phone or they can't see and things like that. They can go do it on a computer. But I do, all of your other recommendations are highly ones we recommend. Like yeah. get them to do it that night, make it a part of the process. Like, hey, once you register and go through the process, then come get in this line and you're going to sign up for volunteering. and. You know, again, that should be through signup.com. So have all of your volunteering positions already ready to go with a QR code that says, here's, you know, go pick your three slots you need to pick for the year. And um, okay. and that way you can kind of do that as part of the process. So what else? What other questions? Um, I actually, I do have two more questions. Um, this is still Suzanne. Yes. Uh, first is regarding the scoreboard and the cost of the scoreboard. I know you're still getting quotes. But with our yeah. parent night being in February and we have to determine before then what we're going to ask in donations, like basically I don't want you guys to come to us in March, April, May, whatever, and say, okay, this is your portion and then have to scramble to do some fundraising. Um, I'm assuming we have to pay for it before they're installed. 
So what's the timeline on that? When are we going to find out what our, because I believe last meeting you said it's going to be proportionate to the size of the club. Yeah, I, I think there's a few things. One, we once we have the quotes and we've got district approval that they're okay with us going through the process of raising the funds to do it and moving it forward. Um, and once we have, uh, we have like two already signed up people that will probably be some hefty, you know, let's say hundred thousand dollars each. Right. So there's, there's maybe a quarter or, you know, a third of the cost there. We will pull the trigger. So the boosters will fund it. And then what we'll set up is, you know, an expectation that over, let's say the next two, three years, um, each club will, you know, help to raise something. Right. And, and we'll have a goal. I don't think, I don't think the plan is to be like, okay, lacrosse, you're 62,580 <laughs> and soccer, you're this and softball, you're this. I think the idea is to be like, okay, well, see if you can raise 50,000 in each club, right? And then we'll take care of the rest of trying to fundraise. And if you don't make it, you don't make it kind of thing, but it'll be more about the effort you put in than it'll be you know, like, hey, here's your portion that you are obligating yourself to. Really, that sounds like a next year type of thing. The right? fundraising, yeah, I don't expect people to necessarily, we, we already have teams that have done. So football already has a massive chunk saved for it. We have um, maybe baseball or a couple others have already set aside a bunch of money for this. So um, I don't necessarily know how much. So you're not. Uh, if you're wanting to start the process and, yeah, and add it to it. your thing and talk about it, I suggest you do. Um, you know, what you ask for, um, I just don't know the number yet, right? Because I don't know, you know, we're expecting to be maybe around a half a million dollars, you know, um, but we don't, won't know for the, another week or so. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. So it's not like you're going to walk up to me in March and say, hey, Suzanne, Here's your bill <laughs> for the, <laughs> and then I feel no, like, no, no, no. you have me a bill. It's my last year. And our intent, uh, we're actually going to have a, uh, we have a fundraising committee that we're putting together, um, you know, with a mix of different clubs and, um, you know, us as masters and the school, um, the, the intent is to make this a school-wide fundraiser, right? I intend to probably have a web page that says, look, we're trying to raise half a million dollars to modernize all of our scoreboards and see what parents want to donate that maybe don't even have kids in sports, right? This won't necessarily be a solely a sport thing. Um, this is really a campus-wide improvement. So there's no reason that we, we don't ask the community at large to do it. Um, you know, and with how many students we have enrolled this year? 2,000 students, right? So, you know, um, you do the math. We don't necessarily need every every family to donate a whole lot of money before we've got it covered. Yeah, and I've already have plans in mind because I know last meeting you talked about how you can, it's really kind of a, a mini jumbotron and we can do what we want. So I'm already thinking during volleyball games, we can pay for spots of people saying, you know, happy birthday, Stephen. Love. <laughs> Let's use it. Oh yeah. Uh, well, and that's the that's the massive improvement. That'll be kind of what we're planning, right? And why we're willing to fund it. We'll have once we have all of these video scoreboards everywhere. Not only will we be able to start using our Pixelot cameras to do live broadcasting and instant replays and things like that, but we will be able to sell ad space, uh, video space, you know, messaging space to families, senior night specials, you know. Um, Right. A lot of clubs do senior night banners. Well, now you won't even necessarily have to spend that money on banners because you can just do a whole video thing and um, have it live on the board for each student as they're walking up. So um, it, awesome. it really will give us a lot of ability to do it. And to be honest, I don't think raising half a million or 600,000 is going to be difficult. Great. And my final question, which should be super quick, um, the square reader, I do plan on purchasing one. I remember last year in January, they were actually sold out. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, you're like, oh, just go to Amazon. And we went to Amazon and we're like, oh, it's sold out. Um, so I do plan for it this year. 
I know in the back end we need to have some sort of an account that it goes to when people have the Square app on their phone. So let's say I have a Snack Shack volunteer and I say install the Square Reader, uh, the Square app on your phone, and the reader will communicate with the phone, which sends the info to a particular account. Where do I get the account information so that when people set up their Square Reader app on their phone, it gets sent to the right place? Yeah, every treasurer of every club already has logins. Um, but so I don't treasure, and I don't have it. I don't know what that is. I'm wondering who knows what my login is. Well, we would just have to reset it then. So just just reach out and uh, open a request with us, um, and we'll we can help you get okay. the credentials. So not specifically with Ling, but just in general on the booster site. Just yeah, Ling, Ling would, yeah, just just email the club request, and then we'll get get it to you. We'll figure out to reset it, have it send it to you. Because what okay. we did when we set everybody up is whoever was treasurer at the time got an email to register for their account. Yeah, she bailed like less like two months before the season and yeah. hadn't done anything. So I kind of jumped in at the last minute. So that's probably where the yeah. disconnect so, and was. We had you and then, yeah. And then once you're in there, then you can use, uh, you know, we can use device codes. There's other ways to let parents and stuff log into the stuff. Or typically what happens is you'll just be like, hey, let me log into this square real quick. And you log in and then they can use their phone to do that. Um, you know, uh, for it. So, or you can use the other things we have around. But yeah, for the snack shacks and stuff, uh, it's a great way to go. And what I would suggest, um, you know, we will have obviously in the snack bar, both of the snack bars that we currently have in the gym and the new one being built will have point of sale systems. So you won't need, you know, um, the square reader for those. We may, I, I haven't been to, you know, a baseball game or softball game where they have that. I know there's a snack shack built out of the little, um, Play base. is it a <laughs> big, well, I don't know. Okay. Well, so, you know, um, so, so hopefully. Snack bar, most, you're about, when you talk about the snack bar, you're talking about the football and track field. You're not talking about the small one in, in the gym, right? I mean, that's the baseball, uh, sorry, basketball and volleyball has its own like mini snack shack that we've just been using cash, which I prefer, prefer not to. Yeah, I am talking about the small gym one. So we are, it was already on the plan to build that out to be more than it is. Um, when I'm on campus next uh, for the scoreboard install, I'm going to be looking at that um, gym um, snack bar. And the plan is to put in a point of sale system. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Hey, it's Rachel again. Yes. Hi. So I actually went on the website since the last meeting and looked. I actually don't see a list of responsibilities for your master booster positions unless I'm looking in the wrong spot. Because I was trying to find the, um, you have the, the secretary available, and I couldn't find the list of responsibilities for that. Do you know where those are? It, it should be. So if you go to the e-form section, there's uh, one that's called uh, board nomination, I think. And then when you pull that up, it should have. Um, do you think maybe it doesn't do it from a phone? Because when I go to eForms, it says check request, bank deposit, club information request stipends, and then W9 form. That's all that there is. Uh, OK, I'll take a look. I might have removed it because it needed to be updated. So, um, you know, if you're interested, just let me know and we'll We'll kind of go out. So, like, for example, secretary, that's an easy one. Basically, recording the minutes of our meetings. We meet bi weekly, um, typically bi weekly online. So, we need somebody to take the minutes from that. Um, you know, that's about it for secretary. I mean, it's kind okay. of a record keeping position, you know, but more often than not, it's just going to be taking the notes at our meetings. Okay. Crystal, you're going to be softball booster next year. Don't over. Oh, don't worry. I, I will do that too. It's okay. <laughs> um, well, that's why I'm asking. So, like, the do you guys meet biweekly, um, online, or do you guys meet in person? Yeah, online. We do it. Uh, okay. We so we use uh, as a boosters. We use Microsoft uh, Office 365. We use Microsoft Teams. We have email accounts. 
Um, so it is it is operated much more like a business than the other clubs tend to be. Um, and so we utilize all of that for um, you know our online meetings and stuff. And that way everybody can participate remotely. Okay. And right and now those are on Tuesdays. Okay, they're on Tuesdays. And currently nobody's yeah. doing that position, correct? Nobody is doing it right now. I'm personally taking notes every meeting myself. Okay, then I guess I'll Which just meet really with you off bar. Person, so. It's not great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be uh, meeting with you off bar then uh, to have that conversation to see if it's something I can step into. And was that Kim in the background? Yes. <laughs> okay, hi. So I'll meet with you too, honey, to figure out what to, to join in next year because I know you're coming out. So <laughs> I'll see what's available. Perfect. Yeah, please. We, we would love to help. Love to get uh, uh, new people involved. Um, you know, control yourself. If there's things that you can do, I'm happy to discuss what those positions do. Uh, some some obviously take more than others, but the secretary is a pretty easy one. What else? What other questions we got? Go back to Spiritware and talk about that. So, okay. are we going to have a? Are we going to have a centralized? online or not this year there already is a centralized one so it's already live the school has one uh um, but it doesn't necessarily sage club's name right no they currently there's um uh, yeah i looked at it when it got sent out i think it got sent out by school yeah um no i don't think i think his idea was that you could type in a team name and it would populate on there i don't know that it's doing that like i said we're we're planning to probably rip that down and do something else but we can get one up for you. We'd probably do it through what we'd already built through the squad locker okay. um, and get that live. Um, just reach out to us okay. and be patient with us. It's a little time consuming and since they, they kind of put it off to the side, we didn't have our graphic designer do a lot of stuff with it. So we work to get it you know, ready. I mean, does it, do other clubs want it? Or, I mean, I can just do it the way I've done it. Uh, no, I think every club wants to have something, right? Uh, you know, we want to track. I know football kind of did some stuff. Everybody wants to have something that they can generate revenue and have people buy spirit stuff related to their team. Um, you know, again, like I said, because the way things started at the beginning of the year with the school wanting to kind of try doing their own, it just kind of everything went into a holding pattern until we figured out how that worked. And, Ultimately, I think it worked in our favor because it didn't work out very well. And now, <laughs> potentially, we can take that back over even for this something more holy. Yeah. Um, but I think no matter what we do, we'll probably do them per team, just because each team may want to have different things that they want. Right? A winter team is going to want more wintery stuff, right? And uh, spring guys they don't necessarily Income. need a sweatshirt. <laughs> you know, well, actually, it's uh, you need a sweatshirt. It can be, depending on yeah, when we start our spring sports and how cold it is. But so well, as spring sports, we're not holding team. You got to be patient with us a little bit. I haven't had a chance to meet with Jason and Tim. And, uh, what site are you using just so I can prove it? Um, I think we might even have a temporary one live for track. Uh, so squad locker. I'll just get familiar with it. I think it would be good too if they were all uniform just because like I know for football yeah. we didn't get our stuff until like the last game which if you had a senior that would have really stunk but so it'd be nice if all the teams were like you could put in the sport like it should just be like the G softball or whatever right. the logo is going to be your, you know the logo and then your sport yeah. and that would be nice just uniform. Yeah. maybe be able to order it early on yeah. and there's potential we could do that but then you guys wouldn't get any anything from it so if we do it as one site like the school one has now and you can put in your team name, you will never see a penny. Right. Because but if you all the, use the, same the mentality would be, hey, as athletics, they're already helping you with stuff in any way. So they're just going to keep that. And if you need stuff, you'll even ask for it. Um, so that's one of the reasons we like the idea of each team having their own, because then it's all yours. Whatever revenue you generate is yours. But we, we need to kind of figure out what we're going to do with it. So hopefully by the time we're up and running, we'll have an answer for you and have something live. But if if we do go on our own, you said last meeting that you have like the vector um, like uh, files so that we can yeah. send them to printers. Do we just do another request, boosters request for that? 
Yeah, yeah. If you need uh, if you need the logos, I'm going to be putting them up in the new knowledge base here pretty soon, um, so that you guys can just download them from the website. Um, but yeah, if you need them for something for a shirt or something, you can do that. Um, and yes, we have all the vectors for it. Thank you very much. Is on there or just yeah. okay, good. Uh, what we don't want is all of the clubs going out and making their own spirit store with who knows who and how and you know that's where we've had issues and i think even football kind of did that they had their own i don't remember if they were doing it through a platform or not but it was one of those we'll ship it to you all at one order and it as we found out it didn't even come until the season was over so yeah, I mean, I we, we don't want that we, we don't want to do that so yeah, and I'd rather do that where you order a shirt, a team shirt, and sell that. Right? You can make a lot of money doing that. You know, a shirt could be 10 bucks, you know, your cost. And if you can sell it for 20, that's 50% market. I get up like $8. I get a sweatshirt for my small $8 and sell it for 30 Uh But what we need to do, the process that we want, if you end up doing that and just building your own shirts and ordering them, um, is um we want to approve whatever the logo is that we're using for that okay so what other questions do we have <laughs> anything else anybody online have anything else okay well we will go ahead and uh end the online meeting um and uh kind of go from there thank, thank you, you everybody for coming thank you